What's up everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life and welcome back to the Budget Bush Plane Chinook. Today, we're working on the controls. Stay tuned. Now today, we're starting work on the controls. I promised you I would tell you when we were getting from needs into wants, and we're definitely there. The control system had its flaws, it had some rigging issues that needed to be dealt with, but I probably could have gotten it working reasonably well. Of course, I can't leave well enough alone, so I decided to dig in, go whole hog, and completely redo the control system. So today, indulge me in that, and let's go watch what I did. All right. So for today's task, I'm going to be working on a part of the control system. I don't know exactly when this is going to fall chronologically in my editing. Uh, I have been working on the motor mount recently, but I had a gap there because of some material I'm waiting on. So I'm going ahead and jumping onto the controls and I'm going to make some linkage parts. Let me show you what we're doing. So here's the part we're going to be making. Uh, I've drawn this up in SolidWorks, and I'll actually, as I'm talking, jump over to a view from my computer screen. This kind of shows you the entire assembly, but specifically what we're looking at is this little part here, which is a part of the linkage that connects the front to the rear stick and actuates the elevator. So coming back over to our piece of paper that I've printed, this is from the stuff I designed on the computer, we have this part here with all of our dimensions. So I am going to go jump onto my tiny, horrible little messy lathe right here and hop over to time lapse and let's see if we can't make this part. And here we have the milling step of our operation done. Uh, I also went ahead and did a nice little thing here uh, where I built a little jig so that I could uh, radius the ends evenly with not doing it by hand. Uh, I'm really happy with how all of this came out. Now, I do need to step this down and drill a hole here, so that's gonna be our next bit. And for that, we're back over to the lathe and we'll uh, get this guy turned down to where it fits inside of our rod. And here is our final piece. I've got a drill down the end of it, so it's now gonna be riveted. Uh, we're gonna add some glue in addition to the rivets just for um, uh, security, keep it from jiggling around, and also some additional uh, securing on the tube. Uh, I added these little quarter rounds here, finished the whole thing, uh, oh, and did the step here. So to give you an idea, this tube here is the material we're going to use, so this guy, Drops down into there, a little glue, some rivets, and if you can imagine that, over in there in the torque tube between the two sticks, that's the first piece done. So I made the decision to go ahead and make a new piece. My old one I did just wasn't up to the specs that I wanted, and with my new tooling I was able to make it better. So these are now done. Both of them fit into the push rod nicely. They're effectively identical. I'm really happy with how they came out. So next, I'm going to make the fork that is a stick base that's going to interface with this and drive it.
And here's the first one of these now. Now I've made the fork here. I've already uh, blued the far side to get ready for the next step of the process, which much like my other pieces here, is to um, uh, drill a hole and then round the end on this. Uh, and then we'll be back to the lathe doing the center work on it. Um, I am particularly happy. This came out really nice. Let's see if I can do this one-handed, but this guy, there we go. You start to see how this, it, once it has a hole in it, is going to work. This guy was going to come down, although it, it's actually gonna sit more like that. And uh, the stick drives the bigger piece, which drives the smaller piece, and the control system starts to come together. So uh, a few more operations on this, uh, and then I need to build its duplicate for the rear stick. So you can't make this stuff up. So immediately after I made these pieces, which came out very nice, I'm very happy with, I went in for the night, came out the next day to make more pieces, got this far along with turning down another chunk of material, and my lathe burnt up. Unfortunately, I was running a very old foreign lathe, very cheap thing. It served me well, but I was working it really hard, harder than I ever have to make these pieces. Uh, lots of time, lots of use, and it wasn't up for it. So, brief interlude while we clean things up, make some space, and go source some replacement tools. And we have a new lathe. Uh, I know I didn't get the final setup on camera, but this is sort of a little sideshow anyway. I know you guys are here for the airplane, not the tools, but I still think it makes for a funny part of the story. In any case, I've already got this set up and working. Uh, just cut a bench down to fit it, but this thing is fantastic. Really enjoying using it. And here's our finished pieces. Now, they're not exactly identical. I am not a professional machinist by any stretch of the imagination, and any professional machinist watching will know that from having watched the video. But this is, while I've done a lot of machining, this is probably the single biggest project I've done where all the pieces had to fit together and I made them from start to finish all in one go. So I learned a lot along the way and I tweaked and adjusted a few things. Like I realized that I could take a little weight out of this by squaring it versus leaving it round like this. So I made that one a little different. I didn't round the front on this one quite as much as I rounded it on this one, but you know what? They all fit together like they should. Eh, we made some duds along the way, stuff that I just, and ironically, these were actually made to the design I wanted. I just screwed up some design elements. So that's a problem I had in SolidWorks. So we have finished up our linkages that are going to hold the stick and actuate the elevator in between the two sticks. So let's go on to what's going to hold them. That is going to start out as this guy, nice piece of inch and a half, 4130. This is going to form a torque tube between our two sticks. Let's show you the drawing that we're gonna to use to build this. 
Here's the drawings of our torque tube. We have our two sticks, the ears that are gonna hold it, the mechanism you can just kind of barely see down in there. That's the stuff we've created already. And here's a little dimensional drawing of what we're gonna do. So uh, this is just half of it, because it's all I need. So we're gonna cut a slot. We're gonna make some ears, weld those up onto the torque tube. So it's a pretty simple piece, relatively speaking. Let's get down to work. So last night we did get our two slots cut into our torque tube. Now, we did have an interesting thing happen where I did I have never done a cut quite exactly like this one. The, the metal has opened up a little bit when we made the cut. So I think I'm gonna have to throw this in a vise and just gently squeeze it back to round. It doesn't really matter up here. We're just trying to get these lines to where they sit square. So I think next I'm going to build the little sheet metal pieces that I have drawn on this piece of paper here. Those ears are gonna get built. Uh, I gotta cut them out. I think I'm actually going to weld them together and then put the whole thing down on here as one. So I'm gonna get cutting some sheet metal and working on that. So here it is. I actually laid this out like this to cut this tube down to the appropriate length and get these lined up, but I realized when I did that, this actually is a really nice show and tell because it really does show how all of the pieces that I've made come together and link together and are gonna work. Now, admittedly, this will all be inside of the tube rather than on it, but we have screws through the two pivot points to where as I move this, these two are as they should be linked. Well, I've just dropped this off and uh, screwed up my demonstration, but you get the idea. Those two are linked together. Obviously there will be glue and rivets involved here uh, to attach the ends to the tube, but that is what's gonna go down the center of the torque tube and provide actuation between these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this assembled so I can take a look at it assembled before I look at getting some glue out and riveting everything together. So we've created our torque tube. I'm really happy with how this came out. It's the next day, so our push rod is now glued together. This is in here. The hardware is temporary, as is most of our hardware for right now. We just have Home Depot grade cheap stuff in here to figure out the lengths of the various bolts we need. So I think the next thing that we ought to do, let's go ahead and get this mounted into the airplane. That is a non-trivial challenge because we're mounting a round piece that has to swivel and, well, not and slide, this piece slides. It has to swivel, it has to not slide back and forth, and it has to be mounted to another round thing underneath the seat. So there's some clearance challenges, there's some mounting challenges, there's some bracketry challenges. Uh, there's also going to be some other challenges getting control cables off of this, because this is going to drive ailerons via something that doesn't exist yet here, and going to drive the uh, elevator with pull-pull um, uh, -pull cables, which also aren't here yet, they're uh, in the airplane. So we have some stuff ahead of us to do. Uh, I think first things first, we're gonna take it a step at a time. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and build the mounts to actually get this in the airplane. Then we're going to build onto those mounts to secure it and to get the controls off of it. So let's get started on that. And we did get started on that. Now, unfortunately, the controls were a way bigger task than I anticipated. We have way, way, way more than I can fit in one video. So there are more videos coming on the controls, but we're gonna save what I was about to jump into for the next one. For right now, let's hop over into a financial breakdown and just take a look at where we are on the project. So where are we with the budget? Well, as of the last video, we had sold the 582 and were $8,400 invested, but hadn't spent anything. That has changed. We bought our propeller. 
$500 to my doorstep secondhand. The phaser engine I had, but I hadn't counted it because we really hadn't done anything with it. Well, as of the previous videos, we did do something with it. Average cost on those is about $2,000 secondhand. Similarly, the Skytrax gearbox is going to be $3,500 for anybody who wants one. We've also spent $165 with aircraft spruce for some material and $90 for some additional material, uh, metal supplies in this case, for a total invested of $14,655, leaving us with a little over $5,000 left in our theoretical $20,000 budget. Will we make it? Who knows, but that's a decent amount of money to get this project done. And that's it for this video. Like I said earlier, there is a bunch more where that came from. We have so much more on the controls, so much more on the engine and the rest of the airplane that I cannot wait to show you guys. So if you liked this, consider liking the video. Subscribe if you want to see more, because trust me, there's way more coming. We'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.